Hey guys, Will here. So if you're relatively new to this channel, you might not have seen this rig before. This is a rig that we built back in 2018 and it's been my daily driver and workhorse pretty much ever since. It's the machine that I use to edit all my videos, do all my streaming and everything like that. So it gets pretty much 24 seven use. It's always running, it's always doing something, whether it be rendering or processing something or you know whatnot. So because of that, this machine has been a little bit neglected over the last 18 or so months. I haven't done a coolant flush since about December 2018. And as you can see here, we'll take you over the details in just a moment, but the coolant used to be a nice sort of green color and now it's sort of starting to fade. It almost looks like a bit of a syrup up in the top there. The water blocks are starting to get pretty murky and yucky. And yeah, just generally it's in need of a pretty big overhaul. Now I'm actually thinking about selling this machine now because I've got a couple of other machines here in the studio. And this machine is likely gonna become redundant pretty soon. So I thought it needed to have a good clean up, a good freshen up and get it all as good as new again before we look at potentially selling it. So what we're gonna be doing over the course of the next couple of videos is giving this machine an overhaul and showing you exactly what's involved in maintaining a custom water loop like this one. So I think this is something that gets a little bit neglected in general. I think people tend to sort of get all excited about custom water cooling and they don't often realize exactly what is involved in maintaining. I know a lot of times people will contact me to build them a machine and I'll sort of say to them, are you sure you're up for this? Are you sure you're gonna be able to maintain this? Because it's not something that you can just sort of set and forget. And because we have just sort of set and forget this machine for the last 18 months, we're now in a little bit of trouble and we're gonna to have to do quite a bit of work. But anyway, let's get stuck into it and let's have a look at exactly what's involved. So we'll go handheld to show you exactly what's going on in here so you can see the state of disrepair that we're in. It's actually not too bad. It's a lot better than I thought it might be in terms of dust and general buildup of crap inside the case. You can see a little bit of a layer of dust down there. Okay, that does actually look pretty bad. So there's a big layer of dust there on the custom acrylic panel that we built. You can see the pass-throughs there start to get a little bit sort of, not corroded, but they start to get a little bit tarnished and a little bit is it oxidization or is it just gunk that's built up? It looks like, no, those, sh those should clean up okay. But yeah, you can see it generally needs a pretty good tidy up. Now, if you look inside the GPU water block here, you can see there's not a whole lot of build up inside the fins of the water cooling block itself. But you can see up in here, there's quite a lot of staining. This little stain that you see through here is actually from when I had blue coolant running in the machine over a year and a half ago. And I didn't actually pull the block apart and clean it properly when I changed fluids, which I should have done at the time. But again, I was too lazy. The CPU water block isn't too bad. It looks like it's got minimal residue inside it. We've never run an opaque coolant in this machine. So it's pretty clear and free of any particulate buildup. And yeah, up here, you can see there's some pretty funky stuff going on with the coolant. Again, it looks kind of like if we tap it, it almost looks like it's thickened up and it's become this kind of syrup. So we'll flush it all out, we'll get it running clear. So we'll give the reservoir a good clean out as well. I'm not sure exactly what that is, but I'm thinking it's probably some sort of a biohazard. I'm almost kind of expecting to see some eels swimming around in there or something. So for those who might be new to the channel, you can go back and watch the entire build of this machine, but I'll just quickly run you through the basic layout here so you have an idea of what we're working with. So this is our drain port, obviously down the bottom here, running into a T-junction. The radiator inlet and outlet, the pump is sitting there as well. You can see the pipes that are running up to our fittings on the front of the case here into the GPU. Now it actually is running backwards through the GPU. I spoke to EK about that at the time and they said it doesn't really make a huge amount of difference, maybe one or two degrees. But for those of you who might be picking up on that, yes, we are running the water backwards through the uh, GPU water block. So it comes back out this side, up into our top radiator. So just moving around to the front here, we have this U-bend that comes out of the reservoir back down to the pump. Now this unfortunately makes it quite difficult to bleed the system initially. You kind of have to get the water flowing up through this loop before it runs into the pump and starts circulating. So that makes refilling this machine quite a, uh, quite a job. And that's part of the reason why I've kind of neglected to do this for so long, but it does look pretty cool. That's the reason why I did it that way. So anyway, let's get to work draining this. All right, so we've removed the top cover as well, just so we can get easier access to our reservoir here. So we're gonna undo the top of that as well. Quite a bit of air pressure built up in there, actually. I heard a little fizz when I undid it, which actually surprised me a little bit, but all right, now we've got an open loop. So we should see when we open up the valve, we'll crack the valve, we should see the fluid come through and we should be all good to go.
with gravity assisted draining plus a little bit of tilting the casing around, we were able to get probably about 60 to 70 percent of the water out. You can see the reservoir is completely empty. There's still a little bit left in the pipe work. The GPU's obviously still got some water in it as well. There will still be some in the radiators as well. Most of this radiator will have drained, but some of this will still have some in it. And if we tilt the case back over, we'll see that come out. But what I wanted to show you next is just how much distilled water is required to sort of flush out to get this running clear again for those of you who are doing routine maintenance more regularly and don't end up with a state like this. So obviously, if your case is this dirty or your components are this dirty, you're gonna to need to pull everything right down and flush it out and clean it properly, which is what we will be doing in this series of videos. But before we go into doing that, I just wanna show you what it's like if you're just doing a coolant change. So you wanna get it running clear and then change colors or something like that. So you can see there's a nasty amount of residue inside the, inside the reservoir here. It's all cloudy and gross and quite, I don't know whether it's stained or just residue, but we'll soon find out. So we'll run some, uh, we might actually take this tube off first and give it a good clean out, and then run some distilled water through it, get it all running nice and clear, and then come back and start pulling things apart. Ugh, that is disgusting. I don't even want to sniff it. <laughs> I'm kind of curious to see what it smells like, but I don't want to sniff it. There you go. That is gnarly. So grab some paper towel quickly. Just see how this comes off. So that does, oh no, it's coming off. There you go, that came off quite well. So the, the reservoir itself doesn't appear to be stained. It's just the, uh, the residue that's left behind. So that's good news. So what we might do is run some distilled water through it. And then we might run the Mayhem's Blitz kit through it as well and just see how well that cleans it up and see how much actual physical maintenance we can avoid by doing that before we get into the heavy stuff. Okay, so what we have here is a 12 volt power supply hooked up directly to the Molex connection on the pump so that we can run the pump without having to power up the entire system. Now you can use a ATX jumper or something like that as well if you wanted to do this, but because we have a 12 volt power supply here, I figure we may as well use it. I've got a couple of liters here of distilled water as well or demineralized water. Now we might end up needing a lot more than this. I do have some stockpiled out the back as well. We've got our filler bottle as well from EK here. So let's get to work on flushing. So we'll put our cap back on just for now while we get the flow running. Now, as I mentioned before, because of the way I've got this set up with the U-bend there, it does make it a little bit difficult to get the flow running initially, which is the reason why uh, I have to kind of do it this way. Normally, if you had the pump directly below with no bend like that, you could just put the water in, switch it on, and it'll just work. But we're going to have to do some tilting and contorting here to get things working. So we'll get that tightened up. And you can see it kind of looks like solo or, or mountain dew or something in there. It's pretty gross. But uh, yeah, it's already diluted a bit. So we'll get that flushing through, run it through, keep running more water. I think we're pro I'm thinking we're probably gonna end up needing about eight or 10 liters of distilled water to get this job done. But I wanted to show you exactly what it's like if you don't wanna pull things apart, and then we'll go ahead and pull things apart later on in the video. So let's get to work, first of all, by getting the water flowing through here. So we'll switch on the pump first so you can just see what happens. So you can see when I run the pump, not much is happening there at all. It's not got enough strength to actually pull the water up and over the bend. So what we're going to need to do is tilt the case up. Okay, that's disgusting. <laughs> a dead bug fell out and onto the table. What is it? It's some sort of a beetle dropped out of the machine when I tilted it over. That's disgusting. We'll have to remember to clean that up later. All right, so switch the pump on again. Okay, it looks like it's pulling the water through. Excellent. There we go. Bit of an airlock in there. We'll crack the valve at the top. Get a bit more airflow. There we go. All right, and let's top it up again. So we'll just keep filling it up to the top. It's a little bit awkward to get the filler port in there. There we go. And then we'll flush all this out again and just keep doing the same thing over and over. Now what I might do simply because of the difficulty with this loop, I'll just drain the reservoir each time and then block it off again and just refill it again from scratch to save me. Now it is gonna make it take a bit more water doing it that way, but I think it'll be easier in the long run.
so what we're trying to do here is sort of have that you can see on one half the water is a bit clearer than it is on the other half so in the up on the upstroke it's going in clear on the downstroke it's coming out dirty so what we want to try and do is stop the pump when the dirtiest water is coming back to the reservoir before it starts to go back through again and that gives us our best chance of removing as much crap as possible before we go through again so refill this again and I'll show you what I mean so as I start the pump you'll see a cloudiness come up into here and you'll see clear water going through there so as soon as the clear water looks like it's coming back down and into the reservoir we want to stop it I'll switch it on you can see the cloudiness coming in. Stop it there. So you can see it started to recirculate, but that's about the best we can get there. I can actually see little flakes of dirt floating around in the reservoir as well. So we might end up needing to run a blitz kit through this as well as pulling it apart. But anyway, we'll see how we go with the uh, with the continued distilled water. And we'll come back and reevaluate. So empty it up again. So about 45 minutes worth of effort later and four litres of demineralised water. So we emptied two bottles. You can see the fluid's running pretty much clear now. Could still do with a couple more flushes. But I think what we might do now is run some of the Mayhem's Blitz Kit Part 2 through this and see how much of this residue it can pick up. You can see there's still quite a bit of residue inside the block here. The actual fins themselves on the, uh, on the GPU cooler are looking pretty good, but I want to see just how well it cleans up this kind of stuff. I feel like that's going to be interesting for you guys to see as well. There's a bit of residue and build up you can see on the fins inside the CPU block. And we will pull these apart and have a good look inside them later on just to see exactly how filthy they are and show you how to clean them. But let's see exactly how effective this blitz kit is next up. Okay, so this is the Mayhem's blitz kit and I'll chuck a link in the description below for you guys. So we've got a little measuring cup here. We've got our part two. We've got our part one, which we're probably not going to cover in this video. We might look at later on as well as a pair of safety goggles and some litmus paper as well for testing and stuff. But we're not going to worry about that too much. So we're going to put it on our gloves. Safety first, as always. Looks like we've got two pairs of gloves here. This is pretty nasty stuff, so you don't want to spill this on yourself. And we'll put our safety goggles on too, just to make myself look stupid for the video. I have actually given myself a camera. I nearly lost this eye. Back in 2008, I had a chemical burn, so I'm very, very cautious when it comes to anything eye related these days. So, safety goggles on. All right, so we're not going to use part one for now. Part one, just so you guys know, is for flushing out radiators. So you tip it into the radiators, diluted, of course. You let the, let it sit in the radiators and it cleans everything out, and then you tip it out later on. So we might do that later on once we've removed the radiators from the case. But we want to see how well part two does just for cleaning up the system as it stands right now while everything's still sealed. So the idea of this is that you dilute it in your distilled water, and the ratio is 25 milliliters to 975 mils of water. So we know we've got just under two liters of water in this machine. That's one thing I do recommend if you guys are building your own water cool PC. Measure how much water you put in it initially. You'll never quite get all of the water back out again unless you do a complete rebuild. So it's a good idea. Take note of how much water you put in. It'll save you having to sort of guess when you do things like this later on. So we're going to tip out 50 mils of our part two. So this measuring cup does have little markers on it so we can get it nice and exact. So we'll tip it out. Now normally you would dilute this into your uh, filler bottle and then tip it into the reservoir. But in this case, seeing as I already have the reservoir half full, I'm just going to tip it straight in and then we can get it flushing through the system. So I'll come around and very carefully tip it in. All right, now we're gonna to wanna to top up with a little bit more demineralized water as well, just to get that running right up the full capacity, but we'll get the pump running now. So they say to expect this to foam up a little bit. I'm not seeing too much foam just yet. We'll top up the water again as well, just to the top in just a moment. But what we wanna do is leave this running through the system now for 20 hours. Let it really sort of get through everything. What it should do is clean up a lot of this crap and build up that we have in our water blocks and in the piping, you know, some, some of the threads as well. And we will obviously clean the threads later on, but I just want to see exactly how well this cleans up with the Blitz kit first. So we'll leave that running for 20 hours now and then come back and see how much of a difference it's made. So it's been just a little bit over 20 hours now of running and look, to be honest with you guys, I'm not seeing a massive amount of difference here. You can see there's still a lot of build up in the water blocks. 
You can see the channels there as well. I've got quite a lot of residue built up. I think what's happening is obviously the water is taking the path of least resistance. And you can see in those areas, it's a little bit more shiny than it was before, but these areas where there's obviously more resistance, where the gunk's really built up, the water's never really going through there to begin with. So it doesn't really have the opportunity to clean it. The reservoir still looks quite dirty. You can see these scrape marks here are where the filler bottle was sort of scratching off the residue that was in there. The piping looks pretty clean now. But uh, yeah, look, to be honest, I don't think the Blitz kit really made a massive amount of difference. I probably would have been better off just pulling it apart and cleaning it to begin with manually and save myself the 20 hours. But these are the things that we do. Let me know in the comments how you guys have gone with the Blitz kit though. Let me know if it's worked for you guys. Now, normally what you would do at this point in time is drain out the fluid that's in there, completely refill it with distilled water, let it run for another 60 minutes, drain it again, let it run for another 60 minutes, drain it once more, let it run for another 60 minutes with distilled water. So we wanted to flush out as much of this mixture as we possibly can to make sure that there's none of this stuff left in the system. Then drain that out again. You want to drain out as much water as is physically possible. And then you can go ahead and refill it with your favorite coolant color. Now in the next video, we'll be moving on to the manual cleaning of the individual components. But what I wanted to cover here just before we finish up this video is flushing out the system completely, making sure that there's as little fluid inside the system before you refill it with your favorite coolant. So as I mentioned at the start here, we didn't worry too much about making sure that we were running completely clear before we put the Mayhem's kit in, simply because I knew that I'd be pulling everything apart. But obviously if you're adding a new coolant color, you wanna make sure that your fluid is absolutely as clear as possible before you do that. Otherwise you're gonna end up mixing in colors and you're gonna have a bad time. So I'll show you quickly now how I go about removing as much fluid as I possibly can without pulling everything apart. Now it's a little bit crazy and I'm sure that a few of you will be going a bit nuts in the comments, but it doesn't really require any additional equipment and it does seem to get the job done. So let's get that done. So first up, we're gonna switch off the pump. Now, did I leave the cap on there or not? No, I left the cap off. So we're gonna open up the valve, make sure that our drain is inside its uh, receptacle. Otherwise we'll end up with dirty water all over our floor, which isn't great. So open up the drain valve, let that drain out. And it's amazing how much of a vacuum is created, how much it actually pulls the water through on its own. You guys would have seen that a bit better in the slow-mo that we did earlier with the, cool, the colored coolant in there, but it's pretty cool. It's amazing just how much it does actually take out. And you can see there's a little bit of bubbling going on just with the fluid that we had in there. So what we wanna do, tilt it up on the side, we'll move this out of the way and be very careful that your drain obviously doesn't fall out when you do this. So we're gonna tilt it up on its side again. We don't have a plug on the top either, so we need to be careful of that. Try to drain a bit of water out of the radiator that's at the top here. I'm gonna tilt it this way as well, just to get more fluid coming back out. And that's actually released quite a bit more there. So I can hear the water draining out of this front radiator at the moment. So that's what that glugging noise is that you might be able to hear. Okay, that's stopped now, so we'll move it forward. So once we've removed as much of the fluid as we possibly can by tilting the case around, we're gonna take another piece of pipe. And in my case, I use a piece of blue tack, but you can use another fitting or another barb if you have one, I just don't have a spare one. So what I'm gonna do is wrap a piece of blue tack around the pipe here. Put the pipe into the top of the reservoir and use the blue tack to create a seal. And then I'm very gently gonna just blow air through the pipe and that air pressure is gonna push the water through and remove a whole bunch more water out of the system. So you don't wanna to blow too hard here. Obviously the uh, rubber seals that are inside the various different components aren't designed for high air pressure. So you don't wanna go nuts here. It's not like blowing up a balloon or anything like that. You're just gonna lightly blow. Now make sure you don't suck anything in because there's gonna be some pretty nasty stuff in there. So we'll just blow it very gently. And you can see quite a bit more came through there. You can see there's a bit of buildup in here. That pipe's still got a bit in it, but it's actually removed a lot out of the radiator. So we'll tilt that forward again this way, just to get a little bit more fluid out of the radiator. And again, it feels so ridiculous doing this, but it does work, honest. <laughs> Now don't take your big breath when you're right close to the pipe either. You really don't want to be breathing this shit in. Back again. So we've still got a little bit of water in this pipe, some in this pipe too. So the GPU block is obviously still full. So we want to try and tip a bit of this water out 
and into the bottom so that it can be drained through the bottom here. So I'm going to tilt the case forward. Obviously, we want to make sure we plug the top again before we do that. Again, it is very, very easy to forget to do that and then end up tipping water all over the place. So you want to be really, really sure that you always block this up again before you do anything else. Make a note or you know, write it on yourself, tattoo it on yourself if you have to. Just do not forget to do this. I'm going to mention the reason why I've got this plugged in in a moment too. Don't let me forget to do that. So we're going to tilt it forward again. I'm going to tilt it this way as well just to try and get that water out of the GPU block. Ugh, there we go. Okay, and you can see that one's pretty much empty now. A little bit more effort still required. You can see this one's draining out slowly as well. So that's good. And basically just keep repeating the process like that until you've got as much water as you possibly can out of the system. I usually spend about half an hour doing that, but obviously you wanna try and remove as much fluid as you possibly can before you refill or before you disassemble things as well because you don't wanna have water spilling everywhere when you pull the pipes off. Now, one other thing to mention here as well is that you can see I have the power plugged in here. Now in Australia, we have switches on all of our power sockets on the wall. So it means you can turn off the active and neutral and just have the ground connected. Now, anytime that I'm working on a computer, I always leave the power connected here, but switched off at the wall. Wall. That way, if there's any sort of power surge or anything, theoretically, it should go straight to ground through the power cable and not zap anything. Now, these days, static protection is pretty good on most printed circuit boards and it's not really a concern. But generally, if I'm working on a system, I like to do that. Now, if you live in a country where you can't switch off the power, probably not such a good idea to do that because obviously you don't want to have live power inside the system when you're working on it. But yeah, that's just the reason why I had that plugged in there, just in case any of you guys were wondering. So I think we'll leave it at that for today's video. That should give you a pretty good understanding of what's required for basic routine maintenance. Now, normally if you're replacing your fluid every three to six months, generally, at least in my experience, you find you don't have the level of build up that you have in this system and therefore you don't really have to worry about all the flushing and all the cleaning that we're going to have to do in the next step here. Generally it's as simple as flushing the system out, filling it up with distilled water, waiting until it runs completely clear, draining it all out again as we just demonstrated then and then refilling it with your favourite fluids. So in the next video we'll pull the loop apart, we'll clean all the individual components including showing you how to pull apart the water block for the GPU and the CPU and clean those up manually internally as well. But that is it for today so hopefully you guys have found this one interesting and useful. If you have please do leave a thumbs up make sure you're subbed and hit the notification bell too so you don't miss future videos and if you want to help support the channel there are some links in the description below where you can do that as well but thank you guys very much for watching and i'll see you guys again soon bye